Hi friends, in today's episode, episode number 15, we will continue the load session what we have uh, left out in previous episode 14. So I will take you to the presentation. Yeah. So here uh, we actually in the episode 14, we have actually covered about the WMS processes and uh, also about the load and the load template basics. And uh, also we saw the various load statuses which are possible when we whenever we do the uh, loading process. Um, so I also had a, a detailed explanation about uh, what, are, what are the ways to generate the load. And uh, we saw a complete process on how the each and every status are applicable in the previous episode, episode number 14. So if you have missed episode number 14, please do check out the same and then come back to this episode number 15 so that you it makes absolute sense. Uh, and then we also covered about uh, load template and load creation process, how it will be automatically created every time when uh, whenever we add the order lines in the sales orders or and also whenever we perform the release to arrows. We saw this particular part already. So if you want, uh, please check out the same. And today's episode is a quick video where we will be covering primarily about the load planning workbench. Previously, this load planning workbench was, was a single form, single form where a user can do both inbound and outbound uh, uh, load planning. But uh, in this episode, we will be covering about the outbound load planning workbench where uh, the user can perform the entire load planning, loading, and then uh, load template allocation, routing, rate routing, all those can be done using the load planning workbench, right? So let's quickly get into this today's video. So if you get into varos management you can either go through varos management and uh, under loads you can find inbound load planning and outbound load planning workbench or you can use transportation management also where under uh, uh, the planning section you have the inbound load and outbound load planning workbench so let me go to varos management and then i'll click on outbound load planning basically both inbound and outbound load planning has the same set of options so it does not going to play a huge difference uh, so this form the navigation is bit critical so first of all let's try to understand this form we have a two grid concept over here so first grid shows you about the order lines since i have selected the sales lines if there are shipments it will show the shipments over here if you want you can go to sales lines also and the next one is for the transfer lines whatever the transfer lines for which the load is need to be created so this was for the sales lines and the bottom we have one more grid where it shows the applicable load id details uh, here you can find the load IDs all the load IDs will be available over here and uh, in this load ID you can actually map the appropriate up the res respective load lines whatever it is applicable so how to do that in case of load mapping is uh, basically you can find uh, the new load or the existing load over here on the top yep so here uh, if you want to let's say let's pick a particular line over here uh, let's say this is the load id in which i want to uh, do the generation okay so and this is the line which i want to add so all you need to do is click on the respective sales order line and you need to say whether you can add it to a new load or you can add it to an existing load and uh, if you select entire order line need to be entire order need to be added to a new load then go for this option or uh, entire order need to be added to the existing load then go for this particular option and then uh, and then uh, all you need to do is um, just click on to a new load and here you can here you can uh, actually select the load template id yeah so this load template id already we have seen that uh, this load template id is available in uh, we have shown in, in the previous episode also where it primarily defines the capacity of the load container which carries your load right so all you need to do is select the load template id and you can see the appropriate details of the item quantity weight and volume all those you can see the details of the same if you want as a transporting coordinator maybe i will be because i need to know what are all the uh, dimensions which are going in a specific truck or a container right so you can view all these and you can click the ok button right so once i click the ok button the load will be added to the particular load id so here you can see that line is missing in the upper grid and in the lower grid uh, let me the navigation is a bit tricky in this case uh, so here you can see the load lines and the shipments applicable over here so the load lines and shipments are available over here you can see it over here um, yeah 
so 220 two load lines are available let's say i want to in 220 i want to add this line also add it to an existing load and then uh, i'll add the load template id and then uh, let me click the ok button so transportation charges to orders field for delivery term 00 does not match the order line okay this is because transportation charges are not matching with the order line so let us try with a different uh, one 221 to existing load let me click on 40 inch container click ok button yeah i think it is added yes so so basically there are a lot of uh, submasters and the configuration need to be done for the load planning but uh, i would say the separate series is actually required for to cover the entire transportation management primarily we are working on our warehouse management series so i since there is an option to complete the load i am just touching upon this episode so when we get into the transfer transportation management series we will cover in detail about uh, the submasters which are involved uh, road route plans uh, route guides which are very important you need to generate a route plan and then um, based on the route plan once it is uh, what is the origin of all those details shipping carrier what is the carrier service all these need to be configured and you need to provide the route schedules and this route plan once it is created then it has to be tagged in route guides in the route guides uh, i think uh, yeah and the results you have to capture the route plan so there are a lot of setups which is actually required and this itself will call for a separate uh, series so that's why i'm not talking in detail about uh, the load uh, load only we are focusing on the functionality which is available for the transportation coordinators in order to perform the load planning right so if you can see here in 221 um, we have added that particular load line so on, if i scroll down um, the load id in which we added is 221 uh, yeah, this is the load ID. So you can see now there are three load lines. Uh, you need to scare. Yeah, you can see there are. This is load line. This is shipment, right? So there are three load lines which we have. Now, if I click on this load ID, you can get all the details about the about the about this section. Now, what is the item number? So this is the item which we added. And uh, if you can see, the work is not completed. It has to be picked, and then only uh, the status of this load will be completed as loaded and then you can confirm the outbound shipment this is actually the pro entire process we saw it in the previous episode please do check out the same right and uh, also the outbound shipment i just want to let you know it can be confirmed from the load form or it can also be confirmed from the shipment form the shipment can be confirmed or it can be confirmed from the work form also so we saw this in the work episode work, temp work and work template uh, part one um so i just want to let you know about the same so so basically out planning outlaw outbound and inbound load planning workbench helps you to perform the load planning and uh, based on which the transportation coordinator can plan for the route and then uh, proceed for outbound dispatches so we also saw how to release two arrows from the from the load planning workbench also i wish to touch upon here see from here also you can complete the outbound shipment once if it is confirmed then the shipment will be uh, completed but uh, the concern here is you need to make sure that it can be done only for the loader uh, load which are with the status loaded so currently yeah i think this is the only one which is loaded so so with the, the if the status is loaded then you should be able to confirm the shipment if it is not because basically we are saying to the system okay i have loaded the materials required in the container now i am proceeding for shipment so this calls for a bad job so i click on ok so once this is confirmed then it means that the shipment the the material is loaded and it is dispatched so the operation is completed so which means it is shipped and dispatched so if you can see the status will be changed to shipped so it it moved out of your premises and then um what else we need to check well, like i said uh, we need to we can provide the um, route and then we can provide the route rate also in which the rate workbench actually helps us i'll just quickly tell you how this page works uh, you, you have the from and to address details and then you have the weight and uh, other dimension details which you can capture here the the delivery terms the customer site and virus from which it is getting dispatched you can also calculate the rate and the route rate system will also suggest you the possible routes so based on the 
configuration whichever you have given in the criteria so we have a criteria for staff whatever you have given here based on which you can system will system will suggest you what is the possible route rate so i don't know whether it is configured yeah i think this is not configured but this is also a possibility which uh, um, a tra transportation coordinator will use and uh, get to know what is the possible route rate and based on which they will perform the uh, date and time that occurs in the past okay so this is not allowing us so so let's try to give a date in the forward and the still i'm not sure because these are not configured just want to show you that uh, based on this date uh, system will try to calculate okay so now the system has calculated what is the possible route guide which which can use what is the rate available so based on this the transportation manager can decide which particular one they can use and uh, all they need to do is assign it so you have the details option over here also right so and this is the item number what is the weight so basically they have all the details to decide which particular route they want to proceed so that's how load planning workbench comes in handy to in order to understand uh, how to plan your loads and the uh, dispatches in the outbound dock or in the inbound dock and also at any point in time you can get the relevant details about a uh, wave work details or a uh, load history all those you can find it in the related information also one more thing which i want to touch upon here is uh, you have the filtration option over here based on which you can uh, filter the load lines and the shipment sales lines and the transfer lines so the supply and demand filter is a custom filter so if i right click click on view details just click on add let's say i want to do a filtration based on so so based filtration and uh, let me copy it um, so here also let me if you select the sales orders so the load planning filter type can be done for basically the following four types for a sales order load or transfer order and shipments and you can provide the appropriate criteria over here in the edit query session so once you provide the criteria and save it and every time when you come back to the screen of load planning the appropriate criteria will be applied and uh, your load lines will be filtered based on the same so for example if uh, even if i give it over here sales order based filtration now you can see uh, because here I have selected sales line so sales order filtration is coming over here if I go to shipment um, if I click on only shipment ID is coming over here because the load type which we selected is ship sorry sales order in this case based on the filter type it comes over there and uh, if you have given load then the appropriate filter will be available over here this filter same way you can fill, apply the filter and uh, make sure that the same is available every time when you come back uh, but all you have to do is you need to ensure that you select set as default so that the same filter is applied every time when you come back to this page right so these are some of the options which are available in outbound load planning workbench so so that's it for this video so like i said in the presentation so we just covered at a high level about the outbound load planning workbench how to use it but in the previous episode we covered in detail about the what are loads how the what are the various statuses please do check out episode number 14 before coming to this episode number 15 and uh, in 16 and 17 primarily we'll get into the basics of packing station containerization which are very deep concepts of uh, wms i am not sure these are not used in many of the organizations despite using uh, wms applications but uh, we'll try to touch upon the basics of packing station and containerization in 16 and 17 um, if you want to get regular updates make sure that uh, you subscribe to my channel you know if you want to get regular videos articles and episodes related to microsoft dynamics 365 f and o thank you